up, guys? It's Jay, more than after kill, and we're here for episode one of our Friday Lootin' Live AMA Q&A mashup, where we take the Friday Lootin' Live, looking for some pearls in General Knox's farmery, and we also answer the questions that you guys might have out there for me, and we're gonna put them together and make one cool series out of it, and we'll, uh, we'll do this every Friday on uh, Twitch and see exactly how well this is received. You never know. It could uh, could take off or it could flop. You never know. Either way, um, it's always fun to try something a little bit different, even if it is still a little bit of the scene, but we're trying. We're trying out there. Um, let's be real. <laughs> This game is older than dirt right now. All the Borderlands games, even the pre-sequel is four years old this year, which is absolutely wild to think that ten years, well, nine years have passed since Borderlands 1, um, six years has passed since Borderlands 2, and four since the pre-sequel. So we are we're hurting a little bit for some Borderlands content out there. And I, I know I could just like, you know, level up characters and continue on with some of that, but I I, I want I want a new Borderlands, guys. I I, I am craving something new and exciting in board even if it's just Borderlands news at this moment. I don't even care. You know, if Gearbox was like, yo, this is the title of our next Borderlands game. I can settle for that. That'll hold me over for at least another few weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, so um, AMA, am I still smoking buds? No, I am not smoking buds. However, um, I do have a medicinal marijuana card here in uh, New Jersey. I have it for being bipolar, and it's, it's done wonders for me the last year, but I am not smoking it. Um, I, I, I want to really, really, really stress that, that I am, I am vaping it, and I know, we get it, Mac, you vape, but, uh, it's a really cool thing, it's a dry vaporizer, so, it doesn't take hash oil or anything like that, I just stick the buds in the, uh, in the back of it, in the oven, and I just, I hit it like a normal vaporizer, and it's portable, too, it's called a Pax Plume, um, I paid, like, what was it, like, $150 for it, I think, something like that, brand new, and it's lasted me quite some time now, so, um, if, if you're looking for a more healthy alternative to, you know, your medicinal marijuana, I don't know if you guys have medicinal marijuana at all, or if you're just smoking it illegally, but, um, there are options out there for dry leaf vaporizers to be portable, and you don't have to have a whole big setup that, you know, you sit there and put the wood block and the tubes and all that bullshit. You don't no longer have to do that, guys. Technology has caught up, and uh, I highly recommend the Pax Plume as an uh, alternative to smoking the marijuana. <laughs> AMA, would you ever play with Cathalion ever again? Ah, fuck Cathalion. Me and Cathalion are on banter. No, I'm not on banter with Goth. I, I fucking love Goth, guys. I really do. We just haven't played in a long time for a few reasons. Number one, um, the guy moved on to other games, but he's also moved on to bigger and better things. And I, myself, as a friend... I, I recognize that a person with my own personality, my voice, my vocal inflection, some of the things I say are not very, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Savory? <laughs> it's not, I, I say some things that are kind of fucked up and can hurt his viewership. And Goth has gone well beyond where we are at this point on uh, Twitch and YouTube and everything like Goth. Goth is huge, so I myself, as a friend, I, I try to keep myself away from Goth at this point, uh, at, at, at least at, in terms of content creation, because I'm sure if I if I went up to Goth and I was like, yo, you want to play some fucking Fortnite or some shit like that, of course he's going to say, yeah, you know, me and Goth has been fucking bros for a long ass time, but I don't want to put him in the awkward position of losing viewership because of, you know, the type of person I am. And I don't want to go ahead and, you know, change the type of person I am because of God's viewers. So just because we've grown apart in terms of content creatorship 
doesn't mean that we've grown apart in terms of like friendship. I still, I'm still a moderator in his channel. I still go by his channel. We still talk and, uh, you know, we, we, we DM on Twitter every now and again and shit like that. But, um, in, in terms of content creation, I think the only community that will ever really understand me and Goth together would be Borderlands 3 when it comes out. So, um, I'm pretty sure that we'll probably see some collaboration between me and Goth during uh, Borderlands 3 era, but as of right now on like Fortnite, Sea of Thieves, all the games that he's been playing, you're probably not going to see any me and Goth content in that, uh, you know, whole sphere of atmosphere or influence. Sphere of influence is the word I'm looking for, <laughs> but... As of, you know, you know, in the future with Borderlands 3, I foresee that we'll probably be able to get something. Probably be like me, Goss, you can throw Broman in on that. And, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe even another fourth that's, uh, you know, somebody that Goss knows throwing like Gunny or something like that. I don't know. I don't know who he's playing with these days. I know he's been playing with some big names like Ninja and uh, Dr. Lupo and all that shit. So I'm pretty sure like those guys aren't going to be screwing. Maybe Lupo might screw around with uh, Borderlands 3. But I don't I, I don't think Ninja is. That guy's like a PvP god. So I don't think he's going to waste his time with a PvE. Unless there's PvP in Borderlands 3, which is... Totally another subject. <laughs> AMA. This is a long one, guys. So let's let's read this wall of text. Sorry if this is long. This is coming from Wild Gamer. <laughs> but I actually talked to Mr. Pitchford himself a while ago, and he loved the idea. But current consoles minus PC can't handle that big of a game. But what would you think of a remake of Borderlands One, Two? and the pre-sequel where all Vault Hunters are universal go anywhere in that trilogy. Dude, I, I've thought of that a long-ass time ago. I was like, man, wouldn't it be really awesome if there was a Borderlands remix out there? Oh, God, it's a Thumper Hellfire. Ew, 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 get out of my face. Look at that fi fire rate. Let, let, let's compare that fire rate to this fire rate. Ready? 2.5 versus 12.5. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. We don't want none of you. <laughs> but yeah, I thought a Borderlands Remix game would be awesome. Like, imagine playing Brick in Borderlands 2, or as Nisha in Borderlands 1. Oh my god, could you imagine Nisha versus Cromorax? She would automatically just lock on to all his crit spots and just wreck him immediately. And that's probably the reason why you can't have a Borderlands remix. It's probably just because Nisha herself is just OP as hell in the uh, Borderlands pre-sequel. But a, a Borderlands remix game would be really, really awesome. And I, I would play the hell out of it. But I don't think you're going to see anything like that anytime soon. Um, th I, I don't really think that, you know, console games have... A problem displaying that much uh, information. I mean, what was it like? Fucking GTA is like a 65 gigabyte download on console, and I'm pretty sure Borderlands Handsome Collection is somewhere around 30 gigabytes. So if you added Borderlands One into the mix, it'd probably be another 15 gigabyte download. Probably be right around the same size as GTA Five, which wouldn't be an issue actually. But I, I think. The issue with that would probably be overall terms of balancing in gameplay uh, mechanics. You know, it's just Nisha just would would wreck everything in Borderlands One, and probably would be totally unfair. But I think Sal in Borderlands One, oh yeah, he, he would money shot the hell out of uh, Cromerax dead, just immediately, just <laughs> like that. That's that's one thing that you got to think of too. Like, would you have the same loot pools for all three games involved? Or would you have to take, you know, the best of every loot pool and add them in? And then you have the issue of where Borderlands 1 guns look totally different than Borderlands 2 guns. Um, it, it, would, it would probably be a little bit, a little bit more 
more trouble than it would be worth for Gearbox. In fact, I would rather see Gearbox spend time just remastering Borderlands 1. Like, right now, if they dropped a remaster of Borderlands 1 this year, that would easily get me another two to three years out of the Borderlands franchise for them to work on Borderlands 3. Honestly, I, I can get I can get two years of enjoyment out of a Borderlands 1 remastered. And let, let's be honest, this doesn't look bad. This is PC graphics, 1080p, 60 frames per second. I have an FOV slider um, tweak on there so I can tweak the FOV. And, you know, I feel like console players never got a chance to play Borderlands 1 in this graphical fidelity or quality. And I, I feel like Borderlands 1 remaster would probably... Um, be just something that would would be well received in the Borderlands community, especially since, like I said, a lot of the people that are on Borderlands on console, when they moved over to the Handsome Collection and they saw what a, what a FOV slider and 60 frames per second can do for the game, oh my god, it reinvigorated everyone's want to play, um, you know, the Borderlands franchise on console. So... I feel like I would rather see Gearbox put effort more towards a Borderlands 1 remaster than a Borderlands 1 remix, especially since, you know, there's a lot of design issues that could probably, um, cause issues there. AMA from Raging Moosey, Aqua 8's Black Infrared 6s, which one am I taking? Ah. <sighs> I have a pair of um, Aqua 8s, and I love them. They're beautiful. They really are. 8s are one of the uh, really unloved out of the uh, original 14 retros, right? For Jordan 1 through 14, I think you'll find that 14s, 8s, and 9s are like the bastard child of the original OG retro Jordans. But I like 8s. I really do. And I, I, I love the way they look when you bunny ear the... Uh, the actual straps on them and the aquas i mean it's, it's a classic colorway it really is an og colorway so is the the black infrareds but i i think number one i i enjoy the look of sixes more than i do the eights and i'm pretty sure jordan won a uh a championship wearing the infrared sixes in uh, what is it 90s maybe 92 somewhere around there um so i'm gonna go black infrareds i mean you can't go wrong with either one but if i had to get a pair for retail i'm going with the black infrared sixes just just because they're they're, they're such an iconic shoe and I, I like the look of sixes better than eights so I'm going, and, and I don't have a pair of black infrared sixes, so they're like on the list of shoes that I want to pick up badly, but I don't want to pick up the uh, the 2014 versions of them because the the infrared on the side kind of looks pinkish, and I don't like that. I want to I want to pick up a pair of the 2010 Varsity Red ones, but the problem with that is that they're gonna start crumbling soon because they're what seven eight years old now 2010 yeah about eight years old they're gonna start crumbling with wares so i i, I feel like if i can get a pair of 2014s and uh you know maybe darken up the red on the side of them i'd be okay with that but um I mean, we're close to another retro of them anyway, since 2014 was, what, four or five years ago? Retros usually come back every four or five, six years. I'm going to wait for the next uh, the next remastering of the Infrared 6s before I, I pick them up. AMA, when and why did you start saying Vidya? I don't say Vidya. Vidya is Yotesting. Vidya is, is mine, okay? Um, Vidya actually comes from King of the Hill, so, um, if you've ever watched King of the Hill, he was always the gut dang Vidya games, right? And it just, it just became a part of my vocabulary. I love King of the Hill. It's one of my favorite cartoon shows ever. And <laughs> Hank Hill is absolutely hilarious. So, that's just, that's, that's, that's where Vidya came from for me. Is, uh, the gut dang Vidya game, Bobby. <laughs> but it also, um, it also you know, mixes well with my Jersey accent anyway, because when we say things like, did you, we would be like, did you, would you, could you, 
you know? Ooh, that fire rate. What's the what do I have a better fire rate on my on a volcano? I think all volcanoes are 0.9, aren't they? Let's go ahead and take a look at this volcano that I have right here. Cobalt Volcano. 734973. It's literally the exact same fucking gun. Cool! Same zoom chance and everything. Awesome. AMA. What do I think the pre-sequel did right? Honestly, I, I'm probably in the majority on this one. Because I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I've talked to a lot of content creators. I've talked to K6. I've talked to Jotes. I've talked to Goth. We've, we've all had this discussion. The best thing that the pre-sequel did right was the skill trees. The skill trees in, in the pre-sequel are some of the most creative and most useful skill trees I've seen in any Borderlands game. I, I think I think the fact that they, they didn't try to hold your hand and overly simplify the skill trees. There was more things like stacks, um, more mechanics to, you know, wrap your head around. And, you know, I, I feel like... I feel like the skill trees in, in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, outdo all the other skill trees in all the other Borderlands games. Especially since every character in the pre-sequel is useful in their own right in every situation in the game. And, you know, some of the some of the characters in other Borderlands games, like Roland or Axton, are just a little bit more, I guess, would I say, boring and not very innovative not very fun to play and sometimes you know some of the some of the skill trees become downright useless looking at you silence the voices <laughs> you know so I, I think I think the pre-sequel really nailed it in two two ways the the scaling of the game and the 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 skill trees because the scaling of the game is somewhere between Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. And you don't get, like, super high numbers on the gear like you do in Borderlands 2. But it's a little bit more forgiving while leveling up like it is in Borderlands 1. But it's not overly forgiving. So, um, I feel like, I feel like the pre-sequel is in a good place in terms of scaling and, uh, skill tree-wise. It's just, it falls flat on actual replayability at endgame and... That's something that Gearbox is going to have to take a look at for Borderlands 3 and, and make sure that Borderlands 3 has the end game loops that we want, you know? Pre-sequel just didn't deliver on it, and by the time they did deliver on it, people have already moved on and the pre-sequel was pretty much branded as the bastard child of the Borderlands universe. In fact, there's more love out there for the uh, Borderlands... What the fuck is it? The uh, Tales from the Borderlands Telltale game? More people have fond memories of that than they do the pre-sequel, myself included. So, Gearbox just has to look at the the, the formula that we they have with Borderlands 1 and 2 and knock that out of the park. And I think the pre-sequel probably would have done better if it actually had um, four campaign DLCs after, after launch because what Borderlands does, right? Like, Borderlands 1 and 2 would not have a lot of content in it if it wasn't for the four campaign DLCs afterwards. Like, Nox carries this game. Um, you also have Captain Scarlet, the freaking Tor DLC, all types of bosses in Hammerlock's DLC. Then you have uh, Tiny Tina's DLC, which added in a large amount of loot that people like in the game. So, I feel like, I feel like the pre-sequel was on the cusp but just never, never got there, you know? Hey, Willard, thank you so much for 14 months in a row of subs. Yeah, you fucking did. Get your ass on about there, clap, trap, trap the motherfucker base in. Hype it up in the chat, motherfuckers. Go, Clappy, go. Psycho, no! No, 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 Psycho, you're, you're clearing all the AMAs. Please don't do that. Please, no, not today.